Hello and welcome to the show and view. This is The Other Side. Today we welcome Uddersfield Town Matt. He's from And He Takes the Chance, uh, which I believe is a podcast, isn't it? Uh, yeah, we do all sorts of nonsense. So podcast uh, videos, uh, tweets, whatever. You know, we, we do a couple of articles. So we just we just turn a hand to whatever we fancy at the time, I guess. Yeah. Whatever lightens the mood during uh, lockdown football. Exactly, yeah. Whatever <laughs> takes your fancy, yeah. Uh, how are you doing anyway on a personal level? Is, has it been a good season for you or is it a depressing one? Uh, it's been a depressing three years, to be honest, <laughs> as, a, as a Huddersfield fan. It's, um, yeah, we um, we obviously got promoted to the Premier League, you know, 16-17, uh, one of the you know the best seasons, I think, of, of all of our lives, if you like, uh, against um, a bit of an against the odds uh, promotion um, and then stayed up for a year, uh, did reasonably well, I guess, in that in that time, but all throughout that year, you could just see slowly it sort of, you know, the, the seams were sort of unraveling slowly. And then it got to the second season and we um, we signed a load of rubbish. Um, so I'm, I'm sure there might be um, parallels with this as well with you guys. And, and we just couldn't get going that second season. We lost uh, David Wagner. I think at this point he was absolutely shot to pieces uh, mentally, physically. Uh, he, he decided he was going to leave. Our chairman was literally on death's door he was in hospital with uh, you know a serious um, serious illness uh and um by the end of the season we'd lost them both and they were pretty much the catalyst in terms of you know with the both alive you know <laughs> lost them both yeah. um but we lost david wagner because he decided to move on uh and dean hoyle decided to sell the club um you know he's, he's he had a bad illness and you know he wanted to sort of enjoy life rather than just be bogged down with football i guess um and then Understandable. it's, it's yeah. Yeah, and essentially what, what Dean did is he, he wanted to sell to another fan, uh, such as, you know, similar to himself. Uh, he picked uh, Phil Hodgkinson and, and Phil's been brought in. And and to be honest, he's been dealt a bit of a tough hand with with COVID. And, you know, we had a bit of a player mutiny at one point as well. And, you know, and a, a, a management team not up to it. Uh, David Wagner's replacement wasn't very good. And um, it's it's been very slow progress, if you like. Uh, the, the old chairman as well, he... He, he pretty much handed the club over for a nominal fee and said, look, I'm going to take the money back out of the club that I've put in over the last 10 years. Uh, and essentially the club are using the parachute payments really to uh, to to fund uh, the payments to, to Dean Hoyle. And what that means is all the players that we signed, you know, the, um, uh, the player amortizations and, and yeah. stuff like that would have been covered by the parachute payments. But now we're in a situation whereby we're having to sell players like Mad to lower that wage bill and, and pretty much get back to ground zero where we were before we got promoted. So... Um, the results haven't been great either. So, you know, last three years, not much fun, but, you know, you have to take your ups and downs, don't you, in football? Oh, yeah, especially as a Yorkshire club. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we don't take the downs, yeah. <laughs> um, so, looking at the team and looking at last season, it's a, it's a chance to start afresh, isn't it? And you've mm -hmm. certainly done that. Quite a few players out the door, quite a few players in. What's been your thoughts on the transfer activity at Uddersfield so far? And do you think there's many more to come? Uh... Yeah, so the players, so I think when you look at us last season, we decided to rip up the script a little bit and we went and appointed Carlos Cobra. And I think we looked over the fence, so to speak, and thought, you know what, that looks pretty good, but we won't mind a bit of that. Uh, so we brought Carlos in from uh, from Leeds United and a uh, bit of a slow start the first month or so, but October, November, December, things looked really good. Um, obviously, with the high intensity game, you know, and the, the shortened uh, season, if you like, the games came thick and fast and with that, the injuries came thick and fast as well. And we had a bit of a, a squad imbalance whereby we had a, a, an okay first 11. It wasn't going to get into the top six or anything, uh, but it was a reasonably okay first 11. But the, the backup was uh, pretty much kids and, and not a lot, really. And yeah. uh, the problem was we had, I think from December onwards, we had about eight or nine injuries, first team players injured for a good four, five, six months. It, we, it's a, an absolutely horrendous injury list. And we just dropped like a stone because the backup players weren't particularly up to it at that point in time. A couple of them came through towards the end and, you know, they look, they look good for next year, like Aaron Rowe. Uh, but what we've done this summer is we've let go a lot of the ex-Premier League ones. You know, your Alex Pritchards, who didn't really do particularly well here. Adama Diakabi went a little bit earlier. Uh, and, you know, a couple of them have, have gone and we've brought in uh, players, you know, such as uh, Josh Ruffles. You know, we had Harry Toffolo. Uh, and Pippa last season, we had probably two, at, at one point you would have said two of the best fullbacks 
uh, probably two of the, the best full, one of the best fullback pairings you know in the championship at one point last season. They both got injured. Um, the backup wasn't good, and and then you know it's it, it was a struggle. So what they've done is they've tried to bring in a steady backup for uh, for Pippa in Oli Turton. Josh Ruffles has come in who would act as a backup to Toffolo. Uh, and that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to sort of strengthen the squad to uh, to carry forward. Any you know, so if we do suffer an injury crisis like last year, we should be a lot more uh, a lot more rounded and be able to cover that. And and it makes sense, but. We're a little bit short going forward, but you know you can't overhaul a complete squad in in one window. So um, it's a good start, but uh, I think we've got one or two worries about outgoings at the minute. There are a couple of noises that could be a couple of players leaving, so we'll have to uh, see see what that throws up as well. Say so Jordan Rhodes coming back to this field as well. That's is that a, just a feel good story signing, or do you think he actually do a job for you? I'm hoping you won't get to answer me, ask me this. Um, <laughs> uh, Jordan was a, an exceptional player for us when we had him in League One. He was, you know, he scored forty goals in a season. You know, one of the is 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 in the top ten all time Huddersfield Town top goal scorers. You know, he's he did he was brilliant for us. It's a very different Jordan Rhodes that is coming back, and for me, the style of Jordan Rhodes doesn't really fit with the style of Carlos Corbran. Yeah. You know, he he plays his four one four one system, and the the striker is expected to run the channels, run hard, press from the front, and it's not really well. To be kind, it's not really Jordan's game. Uh, I don't think he's going to adapt to that at 31 either. Um, so, if, as I suspect, um, he may be a, an option from the bench, you know, when we're chasing games, etc. Or there are times when we do go 3 5 2 and, you know, he's got more support up there. So, in, in that system, perhaps he will do better. But I'm not expecting him to be a, an out and out starter, to be honest. Yeah. And but I hope he does well. He's, he's a great guy as well as Jordan Rhodes. So, it's. Um, you know, is is the type of character that you want at your football club, um, but I'm just a bit, a bit confused by the um, the meshing of of his style and Carlos Corbran's style. But it, it could work. So tell us a bit more about Carlos and the type of football he does like to play. You touched on it there about how he is going forward. Tell us more about the, the style he likes and does it really fit what you've got, or does he really need to strengthen to fit that style? Um, well, he's very much a high intensity play out from the back. Um, coaches, um, you know, I think to call him a, a Bielsa disciple would probably do him a little bit of a disservice. He, he has taken elements from that, uh, but when you watch uh, the way Leeds United play, Leeds United play a lot of uh, horizontal, you know, horizontal passes, a lot of diagonal, quick, low diagonal passes, and we tend not to do that. Partly because we've probably not got the players to do that, but um, so he has taken a bit. So we do like to play out from the back. You know, the fullbacks, you know, the fullbacks go high. Uh, your number six drops in between the two centre backs, and you know to take that sort of three, uh, three four three shape in attack, if you like. Um, so uh, defensively, we're, we're a bit of a mess um, at the moment. We I think we conceded the most goals in the league last year. Uh, so we have strengthened with Matty Pearson, and you know we we did lack a um, an out and out gritty defender at times last year. So you know he looks like he could. Could be quite decent, but again, can he play out from the back? You know, who who knows? We'll have to see when that when uh, when we start the season. But he does he does like to sort of press from the front. Um, you know, high intensity. Uh, the the main issue we had last year was more so the condensed season, the shortness of the season, and the fitness levels, and trying to you know play murder ball every other week with uh, you know eight, nine, ten players injured and hamstrings hanging off, etc. And um, it, it was a bit of a trouble. So with a longer season, I expect next year we might see a little bit more of it for an extended period and. Hopefully we'll we'll see that, but the last six months were pretty grim. Um, the last maybe four months were pretty grim, and he did change a little bit when we played Birmingham at home, and we did change to become a little bit more pragmatic. You know, he held the fullbacks back a little bit more. We were a little bit more safety first, and I think he, he kind of it was a bit of a shame because then he tried to switch switch it again towards the end, and it just didn't work. Um, so I think he might be caught a little bit between two philosophies at the minute, but. I'm hoping you know clear head over the summer and we can uh, we can go back to what made us quite exciting to watch from uh, from November last year. Looking at the players that you've got now, uh, not no possible incomings, just what you have right now. Is there one man who stands out in that team who you think we need to keep him fit at all costs? He's pivotal. He's our star man. Who would it be? Yeah, yeah. Josh Caroma is the uh, you know the, the two fullbacks are excellent. Toffolo and Pippa, um, both linked with moves away. Um, <laughs> But Josh Caroma for me is probably the the outstanding one. The year before he went on loan to Rotherham in nineteen twenty, yeah. couldn't get in the side at Rotherham in League One. Uh, 
you know, the the fitness sk- uh, schedule that Carlos brought in really paid paid dividends for Josh Caroma. And over the summer, he became leaner, a lot fitter. You know, put more muscle on, and he just looks looks so sharp from the from the get go last year. And you know, he I think he injured his hamstring against Sheffield Wednesday um, in around sort of between the 10th and 15th of December, somewhere like that. And he missed the next four months of the season, which was a huge blow for us. And that really coincided with our drop down the league. And, you know, and and the funny thing is he came back towards the end, scored twice, and he still ended up top scorer despite missing half the season. So I think that shows the importance of him. Uh, If he'd have played all last year, he'd have probably got 20 goals, which for an attacking left-sided player is, is a really sort of phenomenal record. So... For me, Josh Karoma, he can go inside, he can go outside. You know, he's strong. Uh, he's got a great touch. He scores from close range distance. Uh, he's He's got a lot. And I think Huddersfield really need to tie him down to an extended contract. Otherwise, they may face uh, losing him during the course of next year. Everybody's favourite bit, who I've had on so far, they either love it or despise it. If you can describe Huddersfield to every other set of fans in the division, using only three words, what three words would you use? Mm. Frustrating. Um, can I use frustrating three times? <laughs> you can for me, mate. <laughs> um, frustrating would be one of them. Uh, we we we're always feel that we're, we're constantly on the periphery of of doing something um, and then get knocked back. Um, progressive, I would say. I think Huddersfield looked to be a progressive club. We we we, we try different markets. That, you know. 2016, 17, you know, we went full German, if you like. We, we bought into to that, you know, the whole uh, gig and pressing, and it worked really well for us. And we bought into the, you know, the Spanish element as well this time. Um, so I would say that, you know, there are elements of a progressive club there uh, with Huddersfield in that, you know, we will commit to something uh, moving forward. Um, we could probably commit with a couple more players, you know, but, you know, <laughs> every, every fan would say that. Uh, so frustrating, progressive, and... Um, Underrated, I would say, Huddersfield Town is. I think people look at Huddersfield and they just think it's um, a bit of a northern outpost, you know, in the middle of nowhere. But I think when you spend a little bit of time around the club, uh, and if you come to the, you know, if you come to the club, it's actually a bigger club. Not not that it's massive or anything, but I think it's a bigger club than what a lot of people give it credit for. Before we let you go, uh, let us know where we can find you on your socials and uh, where we can find any takes a chance on the socials. Yeah, so uh, at Takes That Chance across um, Instagram, uh, Facebook, Twitter, and www.takesthatchance.com is the the website where we've got all all array of nonsense if uh, if you fancy looking at Huddersfield Town related uh, stuff. Lovely stuff, Matt. It's been brilliant having you on. Thank you so much, and good luck right. for the season until you play us. You too.